Okay, welcome. This is Andy Lee Graham, and I'm in San Pedro La Laguna, Lake Atalan, Guatemala. And I'm in the hotel, I mean the restaurant, Idea Connection. So I'm going to be talking a little quieter, because it's kind of full. Uh, the Solar Pools restaurant was closed. So I'm uh, going to talk today about an entrepreneur. I, I'm going to start making uh, a lot of videos about entrepreneur ideas and invention ideas and things that I'm really interested in. I'm, I'm, I'm for sure interested in travel, but I'm more probably interested in uh, inventions. I mean, I've been traveling for a long time, so I've pretty well got that under control. I am writing a book about uh, travel, which is going to be like a textbook on how to live and travel abroad. Um, it's going to call it like Andy's Alternate, alternate, alternate Reality, uh, 25 years as a tribe of one in a hundred plus countries. And the link to a lot of it is going to be kind of a oh, open source book. But today I want to talk about an idea of converting hotels to, you could say an efficiency apartment. You could say uh, a studio apartment. Um, but I'm going to first try to explain. I'm going to start making a lot of video about ideas, things that I have ideas to do and and projects that are really of interest to me because great minds discuss ideas average minds discuss events small minds discuss people eleanor roosevelt and the uh, link to this the notes for here will be in the uh, in the uh, uh, description so you can go find it sometimes i'll be talking about uh, something that is linked uh, but I, I make videos in what I call the propositional style. I write travel blog in a what I call a propositional style. I'm proposing an idea or an opinion. It's my opinion, and it's not a fact. A lot of most, in, in my opinion, especially travel videos are made about uh, like facts. This is this is what you need to do, okay? As if they've lived there for ten years and they actually can explain it. But they're they're in the process of making money, and that's what they're doing. Okay, but uh, opinions for adults only. Okay. Um, I, I will take some questions from people that are watching live if they uh, are asking with a real name and they're um, asking on topic. If you uh, don't want to use your real name, you're going to have to give me a $10 super chat because no – I'm not talking to people anymore unless they pay me. Um, I do have a Patreon link in here um, in this thing. In, in every one of my videos now, there's a Patreon link. Uh, so you can go into the description and find the Patreon link. And I really appreciate my Patreons. We just started this about two months, and it's really done good. Okay. But some of the vocabulary of what I'm doing today is, uh, oh, I see a spot. Uh, extended stay hotel, um, a room with the kitchen, a hotel room with kitchen, a studio apartment, a studio apartment. I, I one time rented a, I, I helped a, a man from in near Fort Wayne to buy a kind of a commercial building and upstairs was an apartment. It'd been empty for years. And I just said, I advertised in the newspaper, just said, New York style studio apartment, and it was rented immediately because it was a wide open thing. A wide open apartment is called a studio apartment. In this link, I have uh, all the definition of these different things in the bottom of this link. I'm not really going to talk about all the pros and cons of these different terms, but at the end of the day, um, they're very good if you're trying to be an entrepreneur to um, start a, do a deep dive on all the different terminologies and what you're buying or trying to do. Uh, studio hotel, studi studio apart, apart hotel, apartment hotel, uh, efficiency apartment, kitchenette hotel. But this is not a new idea. This is there in. Uh, I stay in the Naughty Pine in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Cost about two hundred dollars a week, and it's uh, every every single room in the hotel has a kitchen unit and a fridge, and it's but it's just one big room, right? And uh, this same kind of idea for tiny homes. And one of the things I've been realizing is that uh, the living quarters of an average hotel is a lot of space, okay? And uh, but they don't. Not very often do they add. Um, 
like proper storage and um, proper kitchen units. Contrary to the United States, in most of the world, you you don't have a stove. I mean, that's really kind of a United States thing, and maybe oh, maybe Western Europe, but most have just cooking burners, and they they calling that the oven or stove, and there isn't really a, a place a, a stove unit. So, um, but a stove unit is um, a good and a bad thing in a in a room. Um, contrary to what you think, having a refrigerator in a room is often a problem. It makes a lot of noise. Um, but this is a, a very excellent way to try to create a way for a hotel to, if you convert a hotel room, so you take a hotel room and you convert it where you put a cooking to stove top, like two or three burners, four burners, you put in a little fridge. You put in a place to wash your dishes, and um, it's very simple. And it's kind of a, if you look at a lot of tiny home, um, you know, floor plans, it, it, it's kind of the same idea. And, uh, but it'd be one big studio room, efficiency apartment. And uh, what the value of this is, is a lot of people will rent an efficiency apartment, but they won't rent a hotel room to live in for six months. And a condo unit, what is it? It's just an apartment complex that has, they're just hotel rooms with kitchens. So um, when I was in Huatuco, Mexico last year, um, I was kind of laughing because everybody was buying condos for three or 400,000. And it was really just an apartment complex, okay? And I go, you're not really getting any privacy and you're paying way too much money. I mean, these were maybe worth about $70,000. And they were selling them for 400000 to the Canadians and the Americans. But there's one born every day, right? But this is uh, what people want to do is that they often get Airbnb so that they can have kind of a privacy, but it's really a social status thing. But a hotel, the advantage of a hotel and converted to efficiency apartments is by doing that, you have um, the, if you have an efficiency apartment, the, you can get people to stay for six months, but it, we, the goal would be to convert all the apartments, all the rooms in the hotel slowly over time into units. Like Hotel San Antonio, where I stay at many times in, in um, San Pedro, La Laguna, Lake Atalan, Guatemala, has uh, one unit that is like what I'm just exactly what I'm describing. Um, it's an efficiency, you know, it has a kitchen inside and it's a full thing. The value of living in a hotel, though, is the better location. Okay. Now, a lot of people are under the delusion that living in a hotel separated from the city works abroad in a, in it don't work okay the reason is you have to go buy a car just like you do in the united states and buying a car is an onerous thing to have and or, or motorcycle and it makes life very dangerous for uh, especially for a person over say 60. a lot of people have car accidents and all sorts of things and uh it's really uh a very difficult situation. I'm gonna to have to move the, the the light is streaming in here different, right? Um, so I'm changing. It's always a problem. Okay, okay. So people believe that there's some. They they try to extend the same logic that they use inside the United States um, to another country and in the United States everybody has a car It's one of the few places on the planet that actually has a car and uh, the rest of the world like when I'm in uh, Germany the people are literally riding bicycles and motorcycles to the uh, to the because of parking problems so bad they're driving uh, motorcycles and bicycles to the supermarket um, really funny they'll do it in the middle of winter okay because uh, there's not enough parking in an old 2,000 year old city, right? And it's a uh, it's an interesting situation. Okay, so what the, the value is? I'm trying to get people to li realize that living in a hotel location, because the value of real estate is location, location, location. And the minute that you 
run an Airbnb outside the city in most of the Latino countries, for sure, it becomes very dangerous. And then you have to have transportation and the, co the, the, time, the time that you spend trying to enjoy the community is because it goes from being a walking, enjoyable community like Henry David Thoreau. He was always about walking. And then it goes to a community where you're doing the same thing exactly you did in the United States. One of the reasons you left the country is to escape the uh, treadmill. The treadmill, um, part of the machine, um, go fast in a car mentality is something to escape. Um, but this is not a really new idea in the United States, but it is, you know, one, one reasons why I, but in, what, what an entrepreneur sees is an underservice need. And I'm a, definitely an entrepreneur. I've started quite a few businesses, maybe a serial entrepreneur. Uh, but I want to rent. When you have a hotel, <laughs> the turnover, especially with booking.com or Airbnb, is, is torturous. They, they change. You know, you got to change rooms, clean them, fix them, remodel them, spend all your time. It really becomes an onerous business. But if you converted your hotel to a monthly rental and at least a minimum of monthly rental, um, you can stop having so many maintenance people and cleaning people and it really becomes a lot easier. But I want the hotels closer to the infrastructure of enjoyment. And this is where I, I constantly kind of laugh at uh, expats that enter, they get, they get a Airbnb so far from the city and so far from the center of the backpacker universe, the center of the expat universe, center of the tourist universe, that the time it takes to get to these uh, things to do makes it their vacation horrible. Like there's places here on the lake that to live is just really just a pain in the butt, like, hotel, uh, like San Antonio. Um, it's a little bit better to be in Santa Catarina, but if you're living in San Antonio, you can't go to Panachelle for the night. There is really very little night action. San Pedro has a lot to do. San Marcos is really just a straight out um, tourist spot. And a few people that are living hippy dippy or whatever, right? But uh, I, would, I would want these, um, I would go for the snowbirds, okay? And the snowbirds um, and the people that want to live economically. Right now in the United States, probably 25% of the people living on the East Coast and the West Coast are not going to be able to ever retire. And they could retire abroad into one of these simple rooms where they could pay, oh, say $200 to $300 a month in Guatemala, Mexico, uh, Colombia, all the countries, Central, 200 countries on the planet only earn a roughly... You see, is 84% of the people on the planet earn less than, uh, say, $30 a day. For 84%. So 84% of the people, uh, when, when somebody pays, okay, as a rule of thumb, you want to pay about one quarter of your income for a, you know, for a room, okay, for an apartment for a month. So if you're earning, say, um, $30 a day, you're not going to be able to pay more than about $12 a night for a room. And that's why I only always get rooms for right around $10 a day because it's the just correct price. Everything else is just tourist craziness, right? Uh, but I'm if I go to Europe and I understand in the United States, they, they get more. But uh, what I would go after is I would have a laundry there, a laundry pickup, I would have a kitchen. I would have a community kitchen as well as a local thing. And then you could have some big fridges too that would uh, allow people to put the food outside your room. Often putting room, food inside your room just makes for a cleaning hazard, right? <laughs> the bugs, insects, mosquitoes, and every other thing. I don't like to have a kitchen. Um, I don't like to, I hate having a refrigerator in my room. I won't do it. But a lot of hotels do it, then they stock it up with these uh, Coca-Colas and things that are four times the correct price. Um, but I'd have a laundry pickup once a week, and then I would have a kitchen, a community kitchen, but it'd be uh, monthly leases only. And then you got to have somewhere to have an application. 
okay, and applying for this because a lot of the expats are the wanted and the unwanted. They're not exactly same people, okay? So you, you we got to get rid of the problem children. This is a tough one. Um, how I would do it is I would I would I probably would charge a deposit. And one of the advantages of a hotel and every country is different, but in the United States, if you're renting a room out for I don't know less than probably say you're getting paid weekly on the rent, I think it's real easy to evict somebody in a hotel. If you're doing a month-to-month -month lease inside the United States, you have to do an eviction process. So there's a big, big, big thing to say you pay weekly, okay, in the United States. But um, most of the time in a hotel, you can evict somebody in a lot easier than you can in a thing. And this, this, uh, so, but inside the United States, the apartment hotels, the uh, are getting about. Oh, uh, they're probably getting less per month, but the you can have a higher occupancy, right? So you can have it completely full, and then uh, you have a lot more camaraderie. And when my mo my father had cancer, my uh, mother and father stayed in an uh, apartment hotel that's owned by Holiday Inn in uh, Indianapolis for almost six months. They absolutely loved this, okay, because they had a lot of people to talk to, okay, and this is strangely but uh everybody hates people until they're by themselves in a foreign country and they can't speak to anybody then they start realizing that uh, people have a value but if you don't like people you really best to stay home okay but uh no no cars would be allowed in these places i would highly recommend that you stop all the cars because the car traffic just causes a headache it's not an advantage in you know in countries where public transportation but most Americans are brain dead. They think they have to have a car or a motorcycle, and they got to do and behave exactly as they they grew up in the United States. And this is where they they don't culturally adjust. Okay, but you could have you can have taxi services like a really good restaurant or a really good hotel will have a taxi on call, especially bars, and almost none of these. Uh, countries I go into ever have it. Like, I don't think anybody here in uh, San Pedro has a clue that they could be providing tuk tuk uh, pickup and get the person pay twice or three times the cost and arrange a safe transport home. Well, that looks really good. They got a croissant with a uh, sandwich. Okay, and then the advantage of this type of hotel would be language help too. But the structure of the business, what would I do? I'd have an owner of the property. I would probably rent hotels, okay? And then I would induce the owner to realize I'm going to put maybe $400, $500 into each room to convert it to a kitchenette. Hola, gracias. Um, and it would be uh, a, a gringo partnership with the local person, the person would eventually, um, there's a lot of older people that would, that want you to rent their hotel. Okay. And, but the contractual relationship on this is very difficult. Uh, most contracts, the rule of law doesn't really work in about 200 countries. That means that if you have a contract, it's not very binding. Okay. <laughs> And it's a problem, it's a very big problem. That's why Donald Trump doing all these different hotels and different uh, things, he goes into partnerships. He doesn't really start them. He goes, he, he lends his name to add brand. But uh, I, I keep thinking about this because eventually I'm sure I will be um, kind of supervising the management of hotels to set them up. Because a lot, I have experience in about a thousand hotels, right? And that means that when I walk into a hotel, I see all the things that are missing or the things, the, the cheap things that they can do. Most hotels, hotels could add about, say, 10 to 20 benefits without even extra costs. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, but I would guess you'd have to do the mathematics to figure out if you invested $500 to put in a kitchen, a little kitchen unit in one of these rooms, and maybe some storage, high, high, high storage. There's, there's a need for shelving around the tops of rooms, and a little bit of insulation and some um, a nice set of decorations. Um, I mean, pictures and things like that. 
amazing how many hotels, I've always make jokes when I make a video of a hotel on how many hangers I have. I have three hangers, right? And uh, it's pretty funny. Um, but uh, I recommend that a hotel would start this out with one room. That way you minimize your risk. And then slowly do one room after another until you went converted from, say, renting rooms by two days to five days up to renting a monthly. Uh, the Hotel San Antonio, I was talking to Marcos just the other day, used to be he had expats living in his hotel all year round, long, always paying monthly, and so many of them just lived there for years. Um, that's changed with COVID. COVID has put a real big problem for hotels, plus the booking services uh, have doubled the price of hotels. And the mom and pop hotels like Hotel San Antonio or the hotel I'm living in, Tempo Pucan, are suffering because the, uh, the people are not smart enough to realize that with a booking service, they pay double the price. Uh, you get to use a booking service, you pay double the price. What do I do? I, I get a room sometimes in a strange city uh, for like the cheapest room possible for two days. And I walk around and negotiate a better deal and a better room than you because with a reservation, you're going to have to live in whatever room they give you. And I, I always choose the specific room for sound, quiet, uh, the proximity to the street. I like to get my rooms on the third floor so I have exercise. I like to have a kitchen in the hotel. But I, I want to be able to actually know that the, the benefits that the hotels are supply and I see them before I rent the room and I often move into a room for three or four days and then negotiate a monthly rent but uh, I I'm doing more slow travel I'm not a tourist I'm living in 114 countries I've lived in 114 countries for 25 years okay so I'm only here right now because I'm waiting for my sister to come down she had cancer and um, she needs a vacation her, her husband's a little um, getting older and having problems thinking. And I would do about anything to help my sister have a vacation. And so I'm staying here to give her the good life. And uh, she kept delaying it too. I said, Candy, I don't want to live here. I, I know this place really well. I'm planning on going to probably, I, I'm thinking I might go to Cuba. I, used, I said I wasn't going to go to Cuba, but now I'm thinking about going to Cuba for maybe two months. And then I'm trying to delay because I'm wanting to go to the um, the Royal Society in Concord. They have a July 10th. They have a yearly meeting. Yeah, I get a, a meetup. Okay, and I'm a, I'm a big fan of Thoreau, and I'm writing a book showing how my life is very similar to Thoreau's economy chapter. Okay, a lot of you um, know Sosua, Dominican Republic, and I, I was review when making this video. I go, why did I love Sosua, Dominican Republic? The hotels in Sosua, Dominican Republic are outrageously expensive. But interesting, when I when I first went there, I I didn't go there like the average whoremonger or something. I uh, I was in Haiti, and a, a guy named Eric said. Andy, you're going a little crazy. You haven't spoken English or talked to, to anybody for about a month or two. You could go to Sosua and there'd be a lot of people speaking English. And I went there and I walked around. I couldn't find a hotel, couldn't find a hotel. And finally, I I seen a, a rental for per month, right? And I go, and in Sosua, you could rent an apartment just off the plane. There's dozens and hundreds, really, of apartments for $300, $400 a month all with kitchen units. They're really like hotels with turned into kitchen units, the same thing I'm talking about. And they had high speed internet. And uh, then you had this great beach. And so you had the beach life. So that's one reason I always liked Sosua Dominican Republic because I had uh, a very high quality of living, uh, very good for a digital nomad. A lot of the reasons to go to the uh, whoremonger locations like Angeles City, Patia, uh, Sosua, Havana, Cuba, uh, Medellin, Colombia, are, is they give a higher quality of room for a cheaper price. And they, a lot of the uh, whoremongers come by the month. So a lot of the expats, the, the digital nomads end up in Chiang Mai, Thailand, Patia. They actually... 
I don't know. They're they're a, the digital nomads don't actually travel nomadically, right? But uh, what what's interesting is this is the kind of investment which would be good for an electrician, a plumber, a carpenter, or a concrete, or a, anybody that has any skills. This is the main problem people have with hotel management is they are not maintenance men. You have to be a maintenance man to own rental properties, in my opinion. I can fix anything but a broken heart. <laughs> I can fix anything but a broken heart. Um, but some Andyism. Okay, now I'm going to talk about Andyism, what I would specifically do in the hotel. I don't want to, why would I want to live in a hotel with a bunch of hacks, idiots? And this is, when I first started traveling, I was planning to uh, start a hotel or a hostel in uh, Pia de la Cuesta, Mexico. And uh, I kept thinking on how to have a theme hotel. A theme hotel is like a yoga resort. That's a theme uh, hotel. We now have permaculture and uh, places, which I'm not against, but uh, they, they triple the price, right? They don't make it a, uh, it's really more of a marketing thing, as is ecotourism. But I don't want to live with a bunch of idiots, drugs and drunkies, drunk, you know, losers, okay? I just don't want to be around losers. Uh, one hack that I might do is convert the hotel to a Fountain of Youth hotel where I uh, put the beds on the floor, okay? I sleep, I put my bed on the floor right now in Tepapu Khan. I do it in almost every hotel I go to where I stay longer than maybe a month. And it's to, uh, um, lest we forget, uh, lest we, I, I'm trying to come up with the proper coin term. It's an exercise that I can't avoid, okay? So I want to be able to walk for the rest of my life. I want to be able to get up off the bed for the rest of my life. And if I put the bed on the floor, I, I situate it so I get up off the floor almost, I don't know, 20 times a day. Uh, so I would probably do a fountain of youth room where we, we put things up high where we have to reach them. And we, uh, there would be a lot of exercise gear in the place. I would have it so that people could work out on different things. Like, uh, so the whole, the whole hotel would be a combination of health, gym, plus yoga plus things like that and uh, but I might make them give me a video to to make an application <laughs> say a video application to do it because the quality of the people that lives in your apartment or your hotels or your rental property is what you is very important and if you have a theme hotel it's easier to pair out and qualify your people uh, but good people don't want to live with other, with dinglings. They don't want to live there. And that's one reason why a lot of people want to get in Airbnbs. They want to get away from all the, uh, the creeps, right? But I would make it a self-service hotel where uh, a lot of the payments would be done online in uh, a fountain of youth, or youth hotel where the theme is to, to eat, whether vegetarian, or keto or carnivore uh, I would want to see some sort of like it'd be real tempting for me just to rent the rooms only to people that are either written books or are making YouTube videos about uh, health like uh, say somebody's a yoga instructor I, I would give a discount to people that are uh, have written a book I, I would like to have a writer's hotel where everybody's interested in writing uh, a yoga retreat, a permaculture. A thing. Um, um, what when you're qualifying somebody, if they're not presenting themselves with their full name, and they're trying to hide it, you're trying to rent a room to them. You got to understand this is this is insane. Okay, uh, if they don't have. Uh, Pretty much manners is a way I qualify somebody when I'm renting a, a house. I used to manage 235 units inside uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, all right, hold on, let me go through the notes. Um, the, the variable that's hard to control in outside the United States is noise levels. And um, the dogs, the chickens, 
the traffic, the motorcycles, the motorcycle noise is double, you know, it's, it's increasing about five to 10% a year because suddenly they're uh, selling motorcycles on credit, okay? But uh, long-term people, in a way, you have a hotel where it's quiet and you live and the party's outside the hotel, okay? When you have a hostel, a lot of, like the Mullet Hostel here, they charge more than a private room, but it's a party hostel. It's, it's not, it's doing the, the uh, you see, European, Western Europe mentality of everybody gets drunk and does a pub crawl. I say, that's a transferring, and they charge more than a private room. So, kind of silly, right? Uh, okay, at the bottom of this link, I have, uh, actually I used, uh, I love this AI stuff because it, uh, it went in here and wrote a little, article on the different terms like uh oh let's see so it's got a terms on hotel with kitchenette goes into what it is and bullet points and then at the bottom they got let's see what are the terms efficiency apartment um i don't have a problem with booking.com or airbnb what i have a problem is uh giving an owner of a hotel people that roll in, roll in. Because a hotel, that, like the worst thing you can do, if I'm in a hotel and a tour bus shows up, okay, I know I'm screwed, okay? They're gonna stay for two nights, they're gonna party, and they're gonna make the hotel into unlivable. Airbnb is ripping off people because they're putting them in a location where they can't enjoy the location. They can't enjoy the trip. They are, it's location, 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 and if you have to go more, say you have to get a taxi to get to the, the things that you do. So you kind of got to, when you're looking at a map, you try to figure out what you want to do in that location for seven days. And then you, you get close. Because the minute that you go from a walking to a uh, need to have a car or something, you, or a taxi, you destroy your pleasure. Because you're on vacation and you, you really want to be... And I, one thing great about Europe is they have these pedestrian walkways and they have these big long areas and all the hotels are all the way around it and you can go walk in this area and it's like a it's like a huge park uh, the bad part is it's hard to get to them by taxi so a lot of times the hotels are not accessible the, the high-end hotels are in the worst possible locations they're not near these pedestrian walkways but walking and looking at people is part of understanding a culture okay that's uh, in our, every one of these um, videos. Now I have a uh, information on how to contact me and how to do con consulting and different thing. I'm my dream job would be to walk into a hotel as a secret shopper and uh, make like say two or three videos a day for the owner, explaining how to con improve it and live for free in a five-star hotel and I wouldn't I would be completely anonymous and I wouldn't make videos probably for my website unless the owner agreed to it and then I I can compare any hotel to a thousand other hotels I guarantee that I can come up with a lot of free things to do and a lot of a lot of owners don't realize that uh, the house how how brutish their, their uh, management is. It's amazing how many hotels I walk into where I have to go hunt down the manager, which is okay when you're paying $10 a day, right? But when you have to hunt down the management and you're paying 50, uh, there's hotels here in Lake uh, in San Pedro that I, I absolutely despise because they're, they're slumlords, okay? And they're owned by gringos and they do the absolute, the least amount of work. And they, the, the, all they're doing is selling that it's gringo owned or foreigner owned or American owned. And it's a horrible experience. Okay, I'm Andy Lee Graham. Hit that subscribe button. I always forget to tell you that. I really, uh, eventually I'll go to a Patreon system where most of my, or the members on, uh, you can now become a member on my YouTube channel. And I'll eventually, uh, be doing most of these lives only for members, okay? And I'll go transition away from doing it. To, uh, so right now we're we're finding new members, right? So um, I'm here and you're not. Why not?
I'm here and you're not, why not? I'm here, why? I'm the, adios. Because I, travel is about, travel long term is an emotional thing. It's not money, it's not visas, it's not airplanes. It's how to deal with your mental, physical, emotional spirit. Right? And that's where people miss the point. You got to learn how to deal with your emotional. You get culture shock, culture fatigue. Um, it, it's all it's all an emotional battle. Okay, I'm Andy Lee Graham. Bye bye. Heads Carolina, tails California, somewhere green.